Are you ready? Today, it's gonna be a big one. We are going over the number one requested video I've gotten. The number one question I see across, you know, Facebook groups, Reddit threads, TikTok questions, everything I have seen for new witches. And that is, you probably know, because you read the title, Witch Types. Sparkles. So, I have put a lot of research into this video. I have broken down the different types of witches into six different categories. And at the end of this video, I know this is what everyone actually wants, so it'll be at the end, is a link to the first of five successive quizzes that will give you a hint, a lead to what type of which you are, you know, in five different categories. So I will be going over the history, why we do this, why is it popular and what it means, but basically buckle up. So we're going to start with the most basic and the most ancient distinction between witch types. And that is whether you are a religious witch or a secular witch. Religious witches view their craft as a part of a larger system of piety. They may ascribe to a specific religion, or they may pray to a range of deities from different pantheons. This distinction is as old as religion itself and predates the written record. Wiccans, neo-pagans, and Christian witches are clear examples of religious witches secular witches. On the other hand, many witches view the craft secularly. They don't follow a deity or religion, but instead look to the power of nature and the power within. This is the fastest growing contingent, as many involved in non-religious spirituality and meditation find their way to the craft. While these witches may not follow an ancient faith, they can still incorporate ancient elements or align their craft with a specific culture. The next basic and ancient category is whether you are a witch that practices alone or in a group. Solitary witches work, unsurprisingly, by themselves, but that does not mean they are alone. These witches often commune with nature and spirits in their practice. They are also more likely to be secular or eclectic meaning that they pull from a variety of paths and practices. It is also more easy to be a solitary witch if you are in what modern witches have dubbed the broom closet, meaning that they have not told family or friends that they practice for a diverse set of reasons. On the other hand, there are group witches. This comes in many forms. These witches may be in a coven or community, the essential aspect is that they perform spells or rituals with others and rely on the amplification of their powers together. Witches that work in a group tend to follow a specific religious path or tradition that structures their relationship and group spells. Categorizing magic in this way, white, gray, and black, was only invented in the 1900s and has been popularized with the rise of Wicca. However, the distinction between good magic and bad magic is ancient, and that is why I'm focusing on it today, because it has such deep roots. This became especially prominent when magic and occultism became popular during the Renaissance. While most magic was considered evil, prominent and powerful figures campaigned that some types, natural magic and alchemy, should be exempt from this distinction. Of course, this distinction relied heavily on class, race, and gender. And this distinction is why thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of lower class women, minorities were murdered persecuted for the practice of magic during this time, while 
Wealthy white male alchemists were allowed to practice openly and publish their work. Classic. Today, the categories are far less polarizing. White witches only do positive spells and works. They do not take part in magic for their personal gain, nor do they take part in destructive spells, such as hexing. At most, they will do a spell to bind a person doing harm, or take part in a reflective spell. Grey witches do a mix of spells. While they do spells for the common good, they may also do spells for personal gain. Lastly, while they do not hex lightly, they can take part in, quote, darker magics, if someone has done great harm. Witches who practice black magic, despite the bad press in media and stories, are not evil. While they may use darker magics and pray to dark gods, they often only do harm to those that do harm to others. They have the full range of magic at their disposal. Also keep in mind how you perceive what dark or black magic is. A lot of this is contextualized in a history where minority magic or indigenous magic was considered evil. So definitely check yourself before referring to any cultural practice as black magic. This is most often attributed to voodoo and hoodoo. This category is one of the first that is entirely a modern construction. So previous to, I would say the 1600s, um, maybe even later, most people didn't travel very much. You know, you would travel to the nearest city or the next village, but you were pretty isolated. Unless you were upper class or a merchant, you stayed in the same area. As a result, at that time, most people's place of power was where they were from, where their family had lived for generations. Now, of course, we can travel much more freely, so we have a far more diverse range of places of power and places where we feel a natural connection. This type has been popularized in Pinterest boards and by aesthetics, but it does help people meet witches with similar personalities and guide them in which unique elements to use for spells. In the attached Google Doc and quiz, I give spell materials, rituals, and deity ideas for each of these types. For place of power types, we have sea, swamp, mountain, river, forest, urban, cosmic, and desert witches. The next category has roots in ancient witch skills and specialties. However, they have only been organized and named in the modern age because witches for the first time are allowed to communicate openly without persecution. Similar to the last category, I go in depth on the description, skills, rituals, and tips for each type in my quiz results and the Google Doc below. However, an overview of the types are green, kitchen, divination, hedge, crystal, hearth, fairy. Now, just a quick note on fairy witches if you get this result or if you're doing research. This is not recommended for any beginners. If you get this on the quiz, cool, something to look forward to, but please don't. Elemental, ceremonial, and finally augury. All right, we are at the last category, and this is also the category that will not be included on my quiz. If you heard in the intro, I said five quizzes, but six categories. If you're wondering why the mismatch, this is why. I will now be listing off different religious and cultural paths for witches. Now, this is not a full list, not in any way. There are thousands of different traditions across the world that you can choose. Also though, you should not practice everything and anything on this list. 
Lots of cultures and religions are closed unless you are ethnically or culturally a member of that group. And that makes sense to me, especially after colonialism. Like we respect the members of a group who have kept a tradition alive. If they say it is closed to you, it is closed. Don't even, don't even look over there. Don't even try. Don't even like take things from it because it's not yours. So don't do it, please. Please, please, I'm begging you. So research, research, research. You can find really unique and exciting practices that relate to your family and your ancestors. And I think that is what bolsters a lot of magical practice. You may even feel called to something else entirely. You might even be a secular witch that just works with energy and you want nothing to do with religious or cultural practices. That is also all right. Just please research, um, listen to people, tread with an open heart. I think this is one of the most amazing parts of witchcraft as a folklorist. Uh, you just have to be very careful and respectful of it. Now, here we go listing just a few paths and traditions you might follow, but again, do research to see if these are closed or open to you specifically. Now, what I've selected for this list are the categories that are most popular or that I see most often in modern witchcraft practice. But know that there are witchcraft traditions across the world, as I said before. Across continents and cultures, there are innumerable traditions and pantheons to research and learn from. All right, it's the moment you have been waiting for. As a reward for getting through this long video, one, there's a Google Doc at the bottom in the description that has the full transcript of this video if you really wanna take your time and look at different categories. But also, more excitingly, behold, I'm gonna move over and eventually put a box here. This is the link to the first of five successive quizzes. Now, over here, I'll just scoot. At the end of each video, at the, at the end of each quiz, at the very bottom, there will be a click here link for the next quiz. Just remember you screenshot or write down what your result was, what information is under the result because you will not be able to go back. Um, also, in each result, there is an inactive link, but you can copy and paste it to get to the next video. Again, quiz, been saying videos too much, as you can tell, uh, and that will take you to the next quiz. There are five in total. This is not final. I had a lot of fun making this, um, but this is really just a place for you to begin your research. A starting point, a hint in the right direction, if you will. It, it may be absolutely 100% correct and you don't have to do any more research, but just still always do research because I'm a nerd and I, you know, do stuff. Uh, so here you go again, if it's still not floating there or if my head has cut into it in that house. Um, there, begin. If you enjoyed this video or you enjoyed the quiz, please subscribe. Um, not only will it make me very happy and I will continue to make videos, uh, but you will be entered to win $1,000. So thank you all so much and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.